We said last time in the U.S. we use a, a three-phase system. That's why polyphase, you have more than one phase here. I'll put the values there. They're not there yet. But we use a three-phase system. Why? It's more economical. Economical advantages, that's why. Now, a balanced load, when we start talking about balanced source and a balanced load, a balanced load actually draws equal power from all three phases. That means if you calculate the power from one phase, once you know what that number, multiply it by three, and you know the power taken by the entire load. Now, I decide to leave them as general form. Like if this has an amplitude, this is the peak value on some angle theta, then this one will be the same peak value. The only difference will be 120 degrees off phase, minus 120, and this will be theta minus 240 degrees. We'll talk about why this is negative, negative versus positive. Because soon enough, as I mentioned quickly last time, soon enough when you start doing the problem, if it says a positive, if it says we have a positive A, B, C phase sequence. Sometimes the word positive or they use ABC phase. What that means, VAN is equal to VP, whatever VP angle theta. That means VBN equals VP angle theta minus 120. And VCN will equal VP angle theta minus 240. If it says positive or ABC phase. If it says negative, the problem will tell you in it. Or CBA phase sequence. Then if, v, if VAN equals VP, some angle, doesn't matter what that angle, could be zero, could be anything. Then VBN will be VP angle theta plus 120, and VCN will equal VP theta plus 240. So when you're doing the homework assignment, look for these keywords, either ABC or CBA phase sequence or the word positive or negative. This way you'll know if it's going to be negative 120 or positive 120. If I want to find the voltage between A and B, that's a different value. So let's take an example. If I put numbers, I think the math will be a little bit easier instead of actually leaving it as in general there. Then I can take that equation, just make it as a general form. So here's a case where VAN, I'm going to give you this problem. What do you want to use for a value? We'll use 240 angle zero. That's VAN. And notice I forgot to mention, look at all the negative ends attached to that neutral node. That's the node, the, the ground, the neutral node. I don't know if I use B on the top, C, it doesn't really matter, but just to stay with what I did before, I yeah, use B. B on, the B on the bottom, C, it doesn't really make a difference because I'm going to label them. So this is VBN, which is 240, will be angle, let's say assume this is a positive phase sequence, that'll be negative 120 degrees. And this is VCN, which will be 240, angle negative 240 degrees. If I want to find what is VAB, that's to go from here to there, to measure from here to there. Notice if you look, when I say AB, that means A is the positive, B is the negative. I want it positive here, negative here. That's what VAB. So that's going to be in the same direction as VAN. 
but VBN is backward, that'd be minus VBN. So that would be 240 angle zero plus, or minus, not a plus, minus, and let me get my calculator here too because I'm going to need it. You said uh, v a, find VAB is the square root of 3. Yep, I'm going to get the math here and show you actually correct. 240. Because with the if I use numbers, the calculator will do that for me in one step, right? Yeah. So if I go to my calculator right now and I ask to do these two things, you're going to see the answer. The angle is going to be actually 30 degrees. Let's see if it is. There we go. So the first one is 240. Can you see it on the screen? Yep. Angle zero minus. 240 angle uh, negative 120 and the answer for that it's 415.7 roughly angle 30 degrees where is the 415 coming from it is really the square root of 3 times the 240 that's where they came from. And that's the angle 30. Now, if you take the square root of 3 times 240, let's see if it's equal 415. Where's the square root on this one? Somewhere there is. Second uh, times. Second times, thank you. Here we go. The square root of 3 times 240, 415.692. Point seven. So that's why we know from now on, so I can make it as a rule, if I know, if I know VAN is equal to some maximum value called peak value, that's what the VP stands for, for peak voltage, some angle theta, then I know VAN is going to be what? The square root of 3 times VP and the angle, whatever that angle, you're going to add to it 30 degrees. Now. And those two are equal? Which one? Like, like that's both VAN? Just doing times. Oh, VAB, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay. VAB, not VAN. Can't be equal. VAB is the voltage in A and B, right there. If you take a meter between these two, that's what you're going to have. So you just, okay, you take your thing, times square root of 3. Plus and take the angle and add 30 degrees to it. Okay. Yep. Now, what about if I have Is the a negative sequence, right? If I have a negative sequence, what's that value there? 120. Let's see if the answer is the same. Look what happens. If I have a negative sequence, then it will be what? You subtract 30 degrees from it. Everyone see that? So for positive sequence, that's the positive sequence, you add 30 degrees to it. But when you have a negative sequence, you're going to subtract the 30 degrees because the angles are backward. You know? So that's for positive sequence here. Or we call it ABC phase sequence. For a negative sequence or CBA phase sequence, then VAB will be the square root of 3 is still the same. VP times what? Theta minus 30 degrees. Now, the good news is, once I know one of them, if I have a balance source here, balance means they're only off by 120 degrees, everything is equal, then I know what V, 
BC is going to be, and I know what VCA is going to be. VBC is what are you going to do? Subtract 120 from that value. Subtract 120 from that angle, so that will be the square root of 3, VP. And what is th theta? Plus 30 minus 120. Is that a negative 90? And VCA is going to be subtract another 120 from this, or 240 from that one. So if you subtract another 120, is that 210? And that's for CA, not AC. CA, correct. You go and clock like this way, AB, BC, CA. So if you want VAC, multiply by negative 1. That means add 180 degrees here. Now, for a negative sequence, if you know VAB and you want to find what? VBC, notice with the negative one, we add the 120, not subtract. So you add 120 to that, that'll be what? Positive Yep. And VCA and you add now another 120 to that which is what 210 degrees we call these voltages we call them the line voltages usually VAB VBC VCA we call them the line voltage so when you hear VL that's the magnitude of the line voltage. Now, let's take an example and see what we have, why we like actually this one. By the way, most of our circuits book, they don't draw a three phase like this. They, they might th draw the three phase to you, might not look like this, but don't be surprised when you're looking at a picture of three-phase system instead of the way I drew it there. I am one of the people I draw it like this, by the way. I try to make it like Y because I want you to see that. That's how I draw them, me. It makes my life easy. Sometimes what our book does It's the same thing. A That's A, B, C, and N. Isn't that the same picture? It looks cleaner that way. I like this better for me. I don't know. But don't be surprised when you're looking at it like, I don't see a three-phase, well, a three-phase, or you see three sources there. They don't have the same angle. If they have the same angle, it's not a three-phase. If each one of these was 50 angle 0, 50 angle 0, 50 angle 0, that's a single phase. So this will be 50, for example, angle, let's say I put 50, 20 degrees. I'm just making numbers up. And if this is B, and let's say I have an ABC sequence. or positive phase sequence, or ABC, then VBN is going to be the same as this. Subtract 120, that's what? Negative 100. And VCN will be 50 angle what? Subtract another 120, which is what? 220? Can you only do find VA B, V, A, C, B, C, A, when oh. it's balanced, or can you try to use it when it's unbalanced? Oh, you can. If it's, un if it's unbalanced, then we have to give you each one of these. And if, if you have, if you don't have a balanced source or a balanced load, well, you're going to find out in a few minutes, and maybe I should wait, when it's a balanced source and balanced load, I'm only going to look at one branch of it. And once I have that value, I don't do any more. I, I can tell you what the next value is going to be. 
But if it's not balanced, that means I gotta redo every single one of them as a separate problem. That's the advantage to using a balance. So let me jump to an example to explain to you what I'm talking about here. Let's say we have this balanced source. So let's take a value for that. What do you want to use for numbers? I don't know. Let's pick some numbers that's not common numbers. 80. Well, the 120 is common. The 240 is common. So let's pick some crazy numbers. I, 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 I said 35. Okay. Well, I already bit, put 80 angle zero. I beat you to that. Something is not like 120 and 240. That's what we always use, you know? I could have used 200. And I have another source here. That's the B. And if it's balanced, this will be what? 80 angle what? 120. Negative 120. Negative 90, sorry, wrong side. Well, I'll make them balanced for now. And if it's balanced, this will be 80, angle negative 240. And let me pick some values here. I'm gonna attach this to a balanced, three-phase balanced load. Each one of these has a resistor and an inductor. By the way, the way we label them, we use lower case for the source, and we use upper case, capital letters, for the load. Always. Are we going to be doing a bunch of those, you know, like those transformations we did before? Yes. By, uh, pi to delta and delta to yeah, pi. Yeah. yeah, they'll be coming. So now... Let's assume each one of these, I just did the math, each one of these is 100 angle 60. Combine. So the way this will be connected, A will be connected to A, like this. B now, jump over this, will be connected to B. And C will be connected to C. And really N will be connected to N. That's called Y to Y connection. You have a Y source connected to a Y load. That's why it's called Y to Y. Chris just said, are we gonna be converting? Yeah, sometimes your load, it's not a Y, it's a delta. Sometimes your source delta, that's a Y, so you'll have to convert one or the other to make them matching. So if we have a balanced source with a balanced load, and the question here, can you tell me what is the current I, so I'll put the question here, find I from A to A, from B to B, and from C to C. And let's calculate here also. Uh, so that's the first question. The second question, what is the average power absorbed by the load? Let's say I'm looking for that. So to solve this problem, I'm going to look at one phase only. I'm going to take just one of these. So if I trace this one, can you see it on the screen, the pinkish, purple, whatever it is? If I go like this, just look at that one. This is what my circuit will look like. A 
80, angle 0, volt RMS. So you can choose any close Yep, any one of them. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. That's what my circuit looks like. This is 100 angle 60. This is little a. This is capital A. This is n. This is small n. I should be able to find the current from A to A. Ohm's law. There's only one current through this resistor here. The voltage is the same, right? They're in parallel. We know the impedance. I know the current through it. So I sub AA is equal to what? 80 angle 0 divided by 100 angle 60. And if I do the math, that should be what? 0.8 angle negative 60 degrees RMS here's the good news once you know what I sub AA you want to know what I sub BB is what do you think the answer is Same. subtract 120 degrees from this because the only difference is what that source here is what? Notice it will be a negative 120 on the top. When you have negative 120, it will be negative 120, and there's a 60 in the bottom. You have to the same impedance though, right? Yes, that's well, that's they're all identical. That's a balanced one. Yeah. yeah. So I said BB here will be what? 0 0.8 angle negative 120 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative 60 minus 180 is what? Minus 120 is what? 180. And I sub CC is going to be 0 0.8. Subtract another 120 from this, which is what? Is that 300? Now, I also asked for the average power absorbed by the whole load. So let's find the average power absorbed per phase. This is called one phase here. Per phase. And were these RMS values? I think they were RMS values, right? You said RMS. So it's VRMS, average power is VRMS. IRMS times what? Cosine theta V minus theta I. What is my VRMS for this one? 80. What is my IRMS here? 0 0.8. 0 0.8 cosine theta V minus theta I. Theta V is 0. And theta I for that one is what? Negative 60. That's a plus 60. By the way, is the power factor leading or lagging? Lagging. Lagging, positive angle, inductor. Eli the Iceman. So you, you do. do this for all three, uh, like things you know, do you have to do this for, like IAA, IAB, or IBB, and IC. Well, it's not super hard. You can, but you don't have to. Don't have Once to. you know what this number is multiplied by three, they're identical. If you did it for the other one, we'll, you'll, I'll, I'll show you. It will be exactly the same. So I'll go through the math and show you. Instead of doing it for each one, you only do it by for one, then multiply it by three. And you'll see that in a minute. I got 32 watts here. Now, what Chris said, I wasn't planning on doing this. I was about to write this answer. P average. The total for all of them, because there's three of these phases, I'm saying it's 3 times 32, which is 96 watts. But I want to prove to Chris that if I did AA or this one, if I went to the next one, the answer is going to be 32. So here's my proof to you, Chris, that if I took the circuit, 
We just said if I do the B now instead of the A. I'm getting the same number every time. Should be the same. You mean the average power, 32? Yeah. It has to be the same. That's why you multiply it by 3. What was it, 60? Oh, yeah, I yeah. see it now. I see it now. But let me just do the B here just to prove that it's the same number. Because for So VBN, what was VBN for that problem? 80? Negative 120. So let's see then, average power for the B phase. I don't know, we'll call it B phase. I'll use capital because that looks like 6. So it's VRMS, which is what? 80? IRMS, oh wait a minute, what's the current through that? The current is 0.8 angle what? Negative 180. Cosine theta V. Theta V is what? Negative 120 minus a minus. That's plus 180. And what do you have? That's the same as 60 degrees, isn't it? So that's also 32. Gotcha. I was looking at the... I was thinking they were all going to be 60 degrees for the... You know, like it was all going to be minus a 60. No, yep. Nah, no. I, was, I was doing yep. the load 100 angle 69. Okay. Now with the that's what? Why, that's why I was yeah. up. You will have to. Yeah. You will have to do this if this was not balanced. You got to do them per phase. Okay. So if this is not balanced, you can't say, oh, there's my answer for A multiplied by 3. You got to go and do that for each one of them. Calculate the power taken by each one. Add them at the end instead of just find one multiplied by 3. Let's see if I can try another example here. As I said, VAB, VBC, VCA, we call them the line voltages. So be careful with that. So here's an example. A balanced three-phase system. with the line voltage, ah, uh, with the line voltage of 300 volts. It doesn't say RMS is supplying a balance Y connected. Y connected, I'm sure load here, with 1,200 watts. That's the whole load. The key one is, is balance Y connected. Can you see that? That means each one of these loads is going to take how much? Each one? 400. 400. That's the combined. Nope, a line voltage. I'll come back and that's VAB. Not VAN, that's VAB, the line voltage. So at, here we go, a leading power factor, or uh -oh, leading, that means your load has what? Capacitor. Leading power factor of 0 0.8. Find the line current, here we go. Find the line current, that's I sub A to A.
B2B and C2C. And also, we want to know what is that load. And the per phase, each one. Load impedance. Okay. What we gave you is actually what's given to you in the problem VAB is given to you to be 300 volts. That's what's given to you. So can I find VAN? Yes. Divided by what? Of the cosine of 30. Of angle 30. Try again. So that doesn't give us an angle here. Angle here. So let's say I make the angle the assumption that's a zero here. Remember to get VAB. Where's my notes here? To get VAB, we said we take the peak value, multiply it by the square root of 3, and add 30 degrees to it. So after adding the 30 degrees to it, you got what here? Zero. That means VAN used to be what? 300 over the square root of 3, and the angle has to be what? Negative 30 degrees to work backward. You add 30 to get this one, that means you subtract 30 to get to that one. So let's do the math. Where's my calculator? Oh, right here. 300 divided by the square root of 3. So it is VAN equals 173.2 volts. So here's what I know so far. I have a source here, VAN of 173, oh, I just wrote it wrong here. 173.2 angle negative 30. I missed the negative 30 here. That's the magnitude here. This is A, this is N, and is supplying power here. But now this is A and N. The average power here is what? 300, uh, 1200 divided by three, is that 400? Not 300, right? 1200 watts divided by 3 is 400 watts per phase. Power factor 0.8 and it's leading, right? Well, I can find that current. I'm looking for that current, I. That's what the question I have the average power. That's what's given to me. Again, I'm looking to see if the value, did I say RMS here? It does not say in the problem here the value is really RMS. But when they did this problem, they assume it's RMS. The solution in that book, I just looked at it based on its RMS value. So maybe I should say this is RMS. 
I just RMS here. They left it out. Or they convert to RMS. Nope. Nope, they didn't. They just left it. Because to convert to RMS, you know, well, you don't need to convert, but you have to do, well, you can do divide by the square root of 2. So now here, average power, if it's RMS value, it's VRMS, IRMS, times cosine theta V minus theta I, or times the power factor. Isn't the power factor cosine theta V minus theta I? So this is 400 equals. That will give you the magnitude of that current. So now, VRMS, which is what? 173.2. The magnitude of IRMS times the 0.8. What is the magnitude of IRMS? We'll get the angle shortly. That number, uh, 400 divided by 0.8. Divided by I got 2.887. Now again, I can get the, the angle for it because I know the power factor, it's 0.8 equals the inverse cosine of what? Theta V, which is negative 30, minus theta I. But since my power factor is leading, I know my angle is going to be negative. So this has to be a negative value. What's the inverse cosine of 0.8? So that's negative 37 degrees, because of the leading, that means negative value, equals what? Negative 30 minus theta i. Do you know what theta i now is? Negative 7 degrees equals negative theta i. Theta i equals 7 degrees. So my current now, i, from a to a, is going to equal to what? 2.887 angle seven degrees and you want to find I sub BB if you want that 2.887 subtract 120 from that that's negative what 113 and if you want to find I sub CC it's 2.887, subtract another 120, that'd be 2, what, 32, 33? Find the line currents, we found them all. Now, can we find what Z is? The impedance of each one. Well, that's Ohm's law. I'll leave it on this line. Z equals V over I. You know what your voltage is. 173.2 angle negative 30 divided by the current, which is what? 2.887 angle 7. We know that. Well, for all of them, it will be the same. Oh, yeah, it's balanced. Yep. One, okay, here we go. 173.2 angle negative 3 divided by 2.887 angle 7 degrees. The angle is negative 37. Negative 37, right? It's almost 60. Angle negative 37. So if you want to find out what we have here, we know it's a capacitor and an inductor. I mean a capacitor and a resistor. So my load here, I'm trying to fit fit everything on one sheet, Where squeezing. Is it angle of 30? Oh. Negative 37. Negative 30 on the top, minus this one. 
So my Z here, I'll try and squeeze it there, it's 60 angle negative 37 degrees, which means it's 60 cosine of negative 37 plus J, 60 sine of negative 37. 47.9 minus 36.9. 47.9? Yeah. So it's 48, and that'd be minus, what was it? 36.1. 36J, roughly, right? So what you're looking at, your load here, Chris, mm -hmm. is a resistor of 48 ohm and a capacitor of negative 36J. Every one of them, yep. Doesn't matter which one you draw first. This is your A, this is your B, this is your C. And the reason they're all the same is because it's a 120 degree shift for the Well, no, it says balance. The reason which one's the same? But the, the way the, the, the math works out because you change the angle by 120. Yeah, because I'm making this balance, making that balance. Okay. If they're not balanced, then I'm all off. I got to everything. Yep, got to solve each one separate. Let's try another one. Notice a lot of the stuff is from before. The power calculation is the same as before. That doesn't change. It just we bring in instead of single phase, now three phase. So let's look here. A balanced 600 white, a watt. Balanced, I like the word balanced. So enough, you're probably gonna change that. 600 watt lighting load. Is added, uh-oh. This is in addition to something else then. Is added in parallel, in parentheses here. to the system <coughs> uh, how about to the previous example I don't want to redraw everything rewrite everything to the previous example. When I say the previous example is this one. Let's continue with this. Add it to the previous one. Could you move the paper down a little bit so the record's in the way? Oh. Is that what it said on the book? Or no, I'm trying to change it now. Actually, it's not the previous one, but... Okay, I'll, I'll continue with it. To the previous example, and here we go. Determine the new line current. I don't want to have to go, go back and redo everything. That's why. When I, when I looked at it, I was like, oh no, there's a whole problem before that. So I got to redo that first, and I already started this one. So if, again, what we're talking about here, is this what we have? If you look at the previous example, we had that source. I already did the math for it. So I'm trying to make it quickly here. 
VAN equals what? 173.2 angle negative 30. We did it from before. That didn't change. This is RMS. This is A and this is N. And we had what? We had this one here that we just did the math on it. We knew this was 400 watts. It was 0.8 lagging. And just to make sure in case I need that, we figured the impedance for it by when we did the work, what was the value for the impedance? Was it 60 angle negative 37? If I need that. And we knew what the current coming down here. Remember that current? We just did that. What was that current coming down? That's I sub AA. What was it there for that example? 2.887 angle, 7 degrees, right? That's the previous example. I'm just writing everything from it. So in addition to this, we decide to add a balanced load there. I'm assuming we didn't discuss y to delta since this was a y, the load was also a y. So each one of these will take a power of what? 200 watts. Because there's 600 combined, 600 divided by 3 is 200 watts. The power factor is 0.8 leading. Oh, leading, thank you. Not lagging. The last example, there was a capacitor, right? If it was leading, though. Leading, no. Leading capacitor. Oh, right. Laggins inductor. We're adding, what, 600 watt or 600 overall balance. Yeah. Yep. 200 each for 600 divided by 3 is 200 apiece. So oh, I, oh, okay, okay. the question is, what is that current now? This is actually your capital A here. So what is that current from I, A to A? Well, obviously it's going to be this current plus that current. So I need to know what that current is. Let's call this I sub 2 here. If I know what that is, I know what I sub A A. Well, how can I find what I sub 2 is? Well, I know the average power taken by it. Notice there's no mention about power, leading, lagging, nothing here. I looked at the problem again cl closely just to make sure um, that means the angle is really zero. That's what that means. You're not getting anything there, just no leading, no lagging, unity power factor, power factor of one. So I can find actually what I sub two here. Here we go. Average power equals VRMS, IRMS times the power factor or cosine theta V minus theta I. The fact there's no mention about the power factor, they're making the assumption here, power factor is one. So 200 equals 173.2 times IRMS times the power factor of one. Yeah, they're making the assumption theta V and theta I are the same. I'm assuming that's the assumption they're making. So that would be what? Yeah, it could be purely resistive here. That's why. Usually they'll tell you something. Sometimes when the author sits down to write a problem, in their mind they know exactly what they want. So you got to read through that. Go, oh, what is it? So IRMS 
equals the magnitude of that. It really is 1.15473. Now I'm just trying to read his mind. Did he mean that the angle for this is zero? Or, or did he mean the angle is the same as this angle? Negative 30. So I'm assuming he meant the power factor is one. If he meant the power factor is one, that means theta v minus theta i is zero. which means theta v will equal to theta i. I'm assuming that's what he meant, the person who wrote the question, because it doesn't say anything about it. So I'm going to go with that assumption. If that's the case, then i sub 2 is going to be 1.15 angle what? Negative 30 degrees. If he didn't mean that, if he meant this angle to be zero, then your power factor is no longer a one. Then you can't do that part. Because you need cosine theta v minus theta i. So now what is i sub a a? Plus I changed the problem completely. I took the old one with the new one, so I messed up two problems together. So it's i sub one plus i sub two. I sub 1, we got that early. What was I sub 1 before? For that problem. 1, 2.88 angle 7. Add to it 1.15 angle negative 30. And that will give me an answer to this problem that I made or I butched that problem, whoever. The idea is there, so. 3.86, 3 yep. 3.86, angle what, negative 3 degrees? Now, if you want to calculate the new power factor, you can with that load there. Because that becomes your whole load. Isn't the power factor cosine theta v minus theta i? So now the new power factor, if you want to, it's cosine theta v minus theta i. Cosine, theta v is negative 30, and the new i now, which is what? That's negative 3.3. I don't know if we made the power factor better or worse now. Let's see. Cosine, is it 26.7? Point eight nine. What was it before? And now it's still leading. Why? Because that angle is negative. So we improve the power factor a little bit there. All the problems that I did today, I'm almost actually done with this topic, but all the problems that we did today, I made sure it was Y source and Y load, you know? In real life, that's not always the case. You're not gonna have a Y to Y always. Sometimes you have Y to delta, delta to Y. In case you're wondering what delta looks like, this is what a Y is. We said before, a Y looks something like this. Could be source, could be load, doesn't really matter. I'll make it like this easier on me. That's a Y. A delta
So what happens if you have a Y attached to a delta or a delta attached to a Y? That creates a problem for us. If I call this A, little A, this is B, this is C, let's say I call this one A, this is B, this is C, so you're going to attach this one to this. And you're going to attach this one to this, and B can take and wrap around here. But notice the problem with that, the current from A to A. The current, this current here, it's not the same as this current, it's going to split. So that makes the math more challenging. Well, how do we fix that? Yes. We're going to convert from Y to delta and delta to Y. Delta to Y or Y to delta. That's the best way to do them. You want these guys to be matching. Because if they're not matching, you're looking for a headache. So you either want them both to be delta or both to be Y. Also, there isn't a neutral point on the delta, is there? Yeah, well, yeah, that's, it's not a big deal if you don't attach that one. So that's not, I know there's, Sam going, well, what about, where are you going to connect that one? If you leave it floating, actually, you're okay there too. But that's not the problem. The problem is just like the current going through it is splitting. Like if you decide to take a loop, your loop will look like this. Look at the, what's going through it. Look at this one. If you decide to take that loop. This current through this is going through that. Then it's not the same current through this. It's different because it's going to split. And this current is not the same current going through that. Because it's something coming from here. And this current is the same as this, but, but this one is different than that. So it makes a big problem for us. So next class, we'll learn how to convert from delta to y and y to delta. And this way, we can make them matching so it's the same current going through them, or at least the same logic, the same picture.